Hello, Serge here for the back porch clipboard. Again, I'm still on the same question from Jim. And uh, I guess I need to answer this because although most of us here in the United States are in the, in the frozen tundra, Jim is from Australia, so he's in his summer. So I know he was hoping to get an answer quick on this, and it's probably been a couple weeks since I received this. And uh, so, Jim, here's the last part of your, of your questions and comments that you made to me. As you can see, folks, this takes up almost a whole, a whole page. And this is his last one, and it kind of fills in everything we've already talked about. Can you please confirm as to whether or not there is any relevance to this chin contact and the bump? If there is a relevance, then it would be, of, be an important checkpoint for all swing surgeon students. Absolutely, there's a relevance. I think I've already probably mentioned it in and out once or twice, but I have a position that that, that I've mentioned in the, in the peak performance manual called the bell position. And, and the bell position is the one where I ring the bell and that triggers my, my lower body to start to bump the, in the opposite direction. So the, the, what happens in the transition is, is, that, is that as I'm going up, I stop my downswing when I reach the, the bell position. I ring the bell, bing, and I take off. And so what happens, and I sometimes call this the big bang theory because I go bing, bang. Well, the bell position is not the absolute top of my backswing. It's a little bit short of it. So there's a point in time when as I'm going back, I ring the bell. As my arms and are, are still lifting a little bit more after I ring that bell, my lower body's already going that way. That's what gives, my, gives me all the stretch of all the muscles up from the back of my legs, up through my, up through my hips, and up through my back to my, to my, into my shoulders and my neck and down my arms to give me that bigger stretch to be able to snap the arms through because as I'm going up here and I'm not letting the, 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 the wrist break, as this, when, when, this, when all those muscles get as stretched as far as they go, they start to get pulled this way and boom, that's just when I just it, it, let the arms get that free fall and just explode my, my hands and arms, swinging them up over my shoulder. So the belt position, I have a drill called that I call the fine top of backswing test. You just get in here and you take your setup, you put your back arm uh, hand underneath your forward elbow and you just turn yourself a little bit and you lift yourself up as far as you can go without raising yourself your spine out of position and look what do you see my shoulder is touching my chin where we've already talked about it a number of lessons in a row here it's reaching the chin and that's it now because I'm just doing this in a very static position I don't have a club in my hand I don't have the weight and the, and the momentum and the acceleration of the club also pulling my arms up as I'm lifting them up and aiding that, that, that lift it's a static one. So there's my, my bell position. I put a bell right there in my mind. The bell I use is like the ones, those desk bells like teachers have and you see in hotels. You know that little plunger bell, ding, ding, ding. I turn it upside down. So you see what I'm saying now? The bell isn't ringing a church bell, pulling, a, pulling, the, a line, you know, pulling the cord on the church bell, the rope. It's, it's I touch that bell and boom, and I go the other way. Now, yeah, I guess if I had a, if I had a, if I had a, a rope in my hand going up there, I could, uh, and, and, and I started down, I might be pulling it. But I've always envisioned ringing the bell on the way up, not pulling it down. So I use that little, that little bell. Now, again, I've told people, I don't care if you use a church bell. Uh, I don't care if you use Taco Bell. Just, just have some bell, something in your mind. It's in, remember, this is in my mind. I translate all of this in my mind to that feeling. Bing, bang, and I'm gone. And it all starts when this hits there. So, yes, Jim. I think you're a hundred percent right, a thousand percent right, that yes, this relevance to the chin contact is, is absolutely critical to, to the ringing a bell and bumping, which is a bump is called the lateral left shift of, a, of your forward le uh, knee and hip to start to swing down just like skipping a rocks on a lake. You think about skipping a rock. Every, if you're going to really go to skip a rock, your lower body's already started this way, just like the pitcher throwing, just like the tennis player serving. That you're, as, th as this lower part's already going forward, your arm is still going up a little bit. That's the essence of the bump. The bump starts before the arm finishes the backswing, causes all the stretch, and then bam, you, 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 you pull it down. So that's the ringing the bell position. And the ringing the bell is real easy to find with the fine top of backswing position. That's where you put your bell. So Jim, you are a thousand percent on, right on there. This is a great question. And this clears up a, a lot more about the transition at the top, ringing the bell, and bumping. Well, for the back porch, this is the surge, and I'll be talking to y'all again soon.